sturgeon fishing is cat fishing on steroids, right? We're going to put uh, bait, uh, cut bait out on the bottom and uh, let them sit. And you'll get a little tick, 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 pause, tick, tick, tick. Sometimes they'll just take it down. And there's absolutely no doubt in your mind. Fishing for white sturgeon is something that I have always been intrigued by. These fish can grow to enormous sizes and are found in the Pacific Northwest from Alaska to Central California, with populations in the Columbia and Snake Rivers as well. My wife Bree and I are joined on this trip by my good buddies Mike and Ryle and we're fishing with Stotts Fishing Adventures, an outstanding guide service that guides trips for a wide variety of species in the Pacific Northwest. We're on the Columbia River. We're fishing for sturgeon today, so. Oregon? Washington. Yeah, I am excited. I've never even seen a sturgeon. So Super sturgeon. Gonna... <laughs> know a ton about sturgeon. What's the kind of the strategy, I guess? Uh, so sturgeon fishing is cat fishing on steroids. Right? We're going to put uh, bait, uh, cut bait out on the bottom and uh, let them sit. You'll get a little tick, 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 pause, tick, tick, tick. Sometimes they'll just take it down. There's absolutely no doubt in your mind. So just reel down on them, lift on them, and then reel. And reel and reel and reel. When we get a big one, it's gonna feel like it hooked the bottom. <laughs> Dude, this is gonna be sweet. We're gonna have ourselves a monster fish, I hope, today. Are they uh, like migratory, or do they will they kind of stay in one spot most of their life? Uh, you know, on the, on the snake, um, they tend to stay in the same general area. Here on the Columbia, they can move, I mean, they'll move up and down a lot. Shout yeah, go for it. Go slap, go slap. That's pretty crazy. How old do you think that fish is? Uh, this one's probably five years old. You want to touch them? Oh yeah. These scoots back here are very sharp. Oh, okay. Chainsaw blades. Yeah, yep, same, same family as a shark. Nice. That was right on, man. That was awesome. <laughs> Food source for them. Uh, what was that? What was that? Mus it's a mussel? Yeah, it's a, a clam mussel. Okay. And there's also California floating mussels. Okay. Which are, a lot of people call them freshwater clams. They look like a big razor clam. Okay. Uh, it's a main food source for them. <clears throat> and sometimes when you pick them up, you can feel on their bellies. It feels like a, like a coin purse. It's full, <laughs> full of rocks or marbles, and that's, that's the corbicula in there. But they'll get those and then they actually crush them. Uh, in their in their throats, kind of like a I guess kind of like a crop on a
Now, one of the things you can't control when you're hunting and fishing is the weather. We hadn't even been out on the river that long, and we had two sturgeon to the boat, but we also had wind and waves that were increasing with each minute. So aside from catching fish and getting them on video, the growing size of the waves was now on everyone's mind. Now it's a little deceiving on camera, but the amount of rocking to and fro that the boat was doing was starting to get borderline dangerous. One of those times that as a guide, you're not necessarily in a bad spot now, but the potential is great enough that you don't take any chances, and our time on the Columbia came to an end. But that's what hunting and fishing boils down to, is taking what the day gives you. And this day, even though abbreviated, made us even more excited for our next outing with Stotts Fishing, which is in the beautiful Snake River Canyon.